All right, John Oaks here with Hangsters Hot Rods here in our Homer City, Pennsylvania location. And today, yet another addition to our inventory, this being a 1965 Ford Mustang convertible. Now this particular Mustang, uh, the color you see here, this is actually called Rangoon Red. Um, that's the code that's on the car originally, so it looks to be what the paint is on this car. Now paint itself, nice, smooth, and shiny the whole way around in this car. I've already been around, checked it out. The paint looks really good on this particular vehicle. Now as far as our Mustang goes, really not too many things out of the ordinary on this to really talk about. So we're just going to go through, point out the normal things here, and uh, that'll be it uh, until we get around to, say, the motor and the interior. So as far as our car goes, it does have a 289 motor in it, which you will see the 289 front fender emblems on this car. Uh, now, our car that we have here does not have any of the bright wheel lip moldings. They elected to leave those off. Um, it does have the factory 14 inch rally wheels, uh, rally style wheel for the, the Mustang. Again, 14 inch and it's got BF Goodrich T8 radial tires on it. Uh, all four are all the same size, they're 205, 70, R14s and all of the tread on all the tires is in really good condition on this car also. Now as far as panel fitment and so forth on the car, I've already looked down the side of the car and everything is nice and straight down the driver's side. So our fender to door to quarter panel, all of those alignments, the body lines, the elevations, all of that stuff looks really, really good on this particular vehicle. As we come back here, we're going to look at things like our door gaps. So you'll see the gaps on the front side and then you'll also take a look at them on the back side. They are very uniform with one another, pretty much the same front and back. Um, now our door here, you can see they've got the bright door edge guards here on here, the, the moldings for those. That's going to protect that. So if you, you know, open your door up against something and catch it right on the edge, it's not going to hurt the paint on that. Uh, it'll just get into that door edge molding there and that protects everything. We've got uh, the chrome mirror here. This is just a typical style mirror for the Mustang. Only on the driver's side of our car though. The finish on that, chrome finish, nice uh, polished up too. There's no pitting whatsoever on the arm itself or on the mirror head, either one. Now again, as with the convertible, you've got this extra wide molding here on your windshield around the A-pillar. This is all in good shape here. It's polished up nice, very straight the whole way around. Windshield in good shape too. There's no cracks in any of the glass to talk about. Uh, and then even your trim on your wing windows, again, sometimes when these get old, they start to get a little bit of pinning on here, and there really isn't a whole lot of that on this. Uh, it's polished up really nice, very, very smooth the whole way around. Wing windows, no cracks or chips in any of those. Now our convertible top, as you can see here, it's the white top. It cleaned up very well. As far as any of the stitching, any of the seams, the whole way around on our top here, all of that is in really good shape. There's no stitches pulling out. There's no fraying of anything. No holes in the top. Uh, and it doesn't look to be very wrinkled whatsoever like it was ever used a whole lot on this particular ride. Now, this is a power top also. A lot of the cars we've been getting in here, the Mustangs, they've been a manual top. But this one, there's a button inside. You just go ahead and use that button. It's going to raise that top and put it down for you. And then when you're ready to put it back up, just hit the button again. And it's going to go ahead and bring that top back up for you. And then, of course, you have to manually latch it. But the action of it up and down is done by power. Um, now, our, all of our other bright work on our car, like our door handles, you see your accent pieces here on the quarter panels, even the trim around the bottom of that convertible top, all of which is in really good shape. Let's go ahead and open our door real quick. Just take a quick peek to the inside here before we make it uh, to, to our more in-depth portion here. Again, all black vinyl interior. We've got the bucket seats. Everything in this car here, pretty much factory. Uh, the factory steering wheel, dash, instrumentation, even got the factory air conditioning in here as well. Uh, like I said, nothing's really out of place on this car. Uh, all of your weather stripping around your doors here, even your seals up along 
where your windows go, uh, those are all in good shape. There's no splits, cracks, any chunks taken out of them. Um, they're all intact and all in good shape there. Rubber bump stops top and bottom on the door. And of course, you've got your door tag here also with some of your codes on it. As we close our door, you see that shuts real nice and easy. Um, again, everything lines up really good. Now you have the molding here along the bottom edge of your window for your uh, whenever your convertible tops down. You can see the buttons or the snaps here. Every one of them is here. They're present, they're all intact. And yes, we do have a convertible top boot that does snap right onto those and will cover that top off when you have it down. All right, now we're around the back side of our 65 Ford Mustang convertible. So we're gonna go ahead and check things that we always do. We're gonna check uh, uh, on our convertible top. You can see we have the plastic window. Those are kind of hard to, to go over. I mean, you can see from a little bit of use here that it's a little bit little ripply there but again you're going to get that on any of these plastic windows that's in these cars uh, but the actual condition of it is in really good shape it's not torn like I said all of your stitching all of your seams the whole way around everything is all intact no fraying no rip seams nothing it's all in really good shape you can see a little more of that trim work around the bottom edge there that molding with the snaps in it for your convertible top boot again all of which is in really nice shape trunk panel here fitment on this is very very nice your gaps on both sides are very uniform even along the back edge here of your trunk as far as the gap and your elevation all of that is good even with the quarter panels and your trunk so the trunk lid's been adjusted very nicely on this particular car. Down below, you can see our taillights here and the tail panel. Those look really good. Our uh, lenses here, those are all very nice. No cracks, no chips or anything like that. Your bright work, your bezels around those, those are in great shape too. Polished up nice and look good. Of course, you've got the chrome gas cap here. That always looks nice on the Mustangs. You've got the chrome rear bumper polished up nice. Down below, You've got your rear lower valance, and in your rear lower valance with most Mustangs, you're going to have your backup lights down there. Now you can see on ours, we've got the bright work around there, those bezels there, and then you've got the white lenses or the clear lenses there for your backup lights. Uh, and again, those lenses are in great shape both sides too, no cracks or chips in those. The lower balance, the paint on that is in great shape. And then down below, you can see that our exhaust has been finished off with a set of chrome exhaust tips here. So all of that looks very good. We're gonna go ahead and open our trunk lid and we'll take a look inside. So once we have the trunk lid open, you're gonna see that that same red, that Rangoon red, that continues its way on the inside of all of our panels. It's nice and smooth and shiny too throughout. You've got your trunk weather stripping here. That looks great. It meets right in the center down here. Again, things should seal up really, really nice on this vehicle. Because again, this is all very soft and supple seals. Nothing's torn. There's no chunks out of it. It looks fairly new for this vehicle. You can see that it pertains your original sticker back here for your jack and your spare instructions here. We do have a spare. It's a full size spare got a tire cover on it matching trunk mat also with that tire cover trunk mats in great shape this is where our convertible top boot is too by the way black boot so again when that tops down that's going to cover everything up make this car look really really nice your springs to hold the trunk lid up those are intact and working as they should as you can see everything's holding up fine there and again the trunk itself is in really good shape no need to really peel back that uh, trunk mat as with our Mustangs that the uh, actual fuel tank fits down in from the top and that provides a good portion of your floor so as long as your fuel tanks in good shape you usually have a pretty good floor in your Mustangs here so again that's all in great condition the fuel fill neck it's all intact and in good shape too now again power top on this car so the other thing that I always look for on these is to make sure that everything is dry back here. Again, you have those hydraulic cylinders in here that will sometimes with age start to leak a little bit. This particular car, nice and dry, bone dry back here. So again, 
that is a good thing to have with a convertible top, power top. Okay, so on our passenger side here, we're just going to kind of go over the same thing that we did over on the other side. So starting with our visual of down the side of the car, uh, again, everything lines up really nice on this car. The panel fitment, your elevations, everything just looks great. Again, paint also, nice, smooth and shiny the whole way around on this particular car. Um, you're going to get a chance again just to see the very last portion of our trim here around the bottom of our window here, or a convertible top I should say, and again all of that is in really good shape. Uh, of course the bright uh, accent moldings there, door edge moldings here just as they were on the other side. Uh, now we'll check our gaps of course on this side as well. So our back door gaps here as well as our front gaps. Again you can see that they're pretty uniform. Front looks like it might be a little bit more, but again, that's kind of just a visual there uh, because you do have the door edge moldings on here. So those take up a little bit of room and kind of take your eye away from that. So uh, again, gaps are pretty much the same the whole way around. Um, we'll go ahead and do the same thing that we always do, and that is open up our doors, take a look on the inside real briefly here. Again, that Rangoon Red continues on the inside, rubber bump stops, top and bottom, all of your seals and weather strip around the door and up around where your windows come up against the seal those are all in good shape again on this side as well uh, again we've already mentioned the interior we're going to go over that here more in depth once we get inside the car so again don't uh, worry about that we'll take a closer look here in just a minute as we come forward here again we'll talk about our trim here on the vent windows or wing windows Again, this side looks really good too. You've got your wide trim here for your A-pillar for the convertible. Again, that looks good. You can see how nice and straight that is. Uh, and again, the glass is in great shape, both our windshield and our wing windows. Uh, now here we've got a fender mounted uh, antenna. It is not power, uh, just manual. So you can go ahead and raise that up if you need to to get a little better radio reception. Of course, you've got the Mustang. Uh, badging down here and then up front again you've got the 289 fender emblems all of which are in really good shape for this particular car and here we are now finally at the front end of our 65 Ford Mustang convertible so to start with we'll just kind of start on the top here and looking at the hood all steel factory hood here um, you've got you know, your elevations and your gaps here on the hood are in very good shape here adjusted very well again your your fenders to your hood there's no difference there when you run your hand over it and all of your lines all the way back to that cow piece back there those all line up too again the paints very nice on this hood uh, on the entire car as a matter of fact you've got your Ford badging up across the front you've got your bright work your trim right along the leading edge of that hood all of which looks really good nice and straight there's no dents or dings in any of that just below that, you've got just your standard grill for the Mustang, uh, and it's all in great shape. So the, uh, the backing behind it, this uh, looks kind of like a honeycomb pattern in it. That's all in great shape on, on the, the, uh, the grill, and all of your bright work, your trim around it, all looks good. Of course, you've got the Mustang emblem there right in the center. We've got nice chrome front bumper to match up with the rear bumper. Down below on our lower balance here, you do have your turn signals or your parking lights. Um, those are in great shape. The bezels around them, nice and shiny, polished up really nice. The amber lenses on these are in real good shape too. There's no cracks or chips in either one of those. Headlights themselves, those are just your traditional sealed beam units. So again, you're going to have the high and low beam all in one unit on this car. Uh, and of course, you've got your dimmer switch inside. Uh, even the trim around those are in great shape, painted the same color as the car, and everything lines up really well on this particular car. Let's open our hood, and on the underside, once again, that color of red, that Rangoon red, it's continued on to the underside of our hood here, um, all of which looks really good, that nice and shiny underneath here too. Of course, the actual motor compartment here, engine compartment, all painted up black there just to kind of deviate between the two. Um, and then, of course, you've got your VIN number stamped 
into your fenders here and everything so that you can tell everything matches up. As far as the engine goes, we'll just kind of start at the top, work our way down. You can see it's got this gold anodized air cleaner here on top, uh, along with a set of gold painted valve covers. So they've got that matched up so it all looks like it all belongs there. Underneath the air cleaner, we've got a Holly single feed four barrel carburetor. It does have the electric choke on it. And upon checking the numbers on that, it appears to be a 600 CFM carburetor. So for a 289 motor, uh, which is what this is, um, that would be a good amount of carburetor for a four barrel anyways, for on this particular vehicle. Um, so it's got an aluminum Edelbrock Performer uh, 289 intake on it. Um, so that's a nice addition to it. Um, now, again, this is a non-original motor, um, so it's not the one that this would have come with. But as far as the rest of the drive line, I believe upon checking all of the codes and everything, I believe we've got the original transmission for this car being a C4 automatic. And then I believe we've got the original 8-inch Ford rear end uh, that's back there with the 280 gear in it as well. Now, you see this big unit right here underneath the hood. This is your factory air conditioning unit. This is your compressor here. So that's all hooked up there. You'll see when we get inside the unit in there that they used for the air conditioning back then in 65. Got a factory style radiator here, a six blade fan for cooling, and you do have the small shroud on here too to kind of help with that. Um, as far as any extras though, um, Ignition. They've, it looks like we've got uh, a slightly upgraded ignition. It's got a Mallory uh, distributor in it. It's got a Mallory uh, coil in it as well. So they've got those two items uh, matched up. Looks like they've gone to a set of seven millimeter spark plug wires in here also. So that's all going to help uh, you know get a little bit more spark to the engine. Uh, to help it breathe a little better, we've got a set of long tube headers on this car. Now those long tube headers, they empty out into dual exhaust, uh, dual mufflers, tailpipes out the rear of the car as it should be. Um, so that's, again, like I said, you've got better spark with the ignition and you've got better breathing there with the exhaust work that they've got on the car. Uh, now this is a power steering car, uh, but it is a manual brake. It's disc brakes up front drum brakes in the rear. All right, now that we're sitting inside of our 65 Mustang convertible here, we're gonna talk about the interior. Starting out at the door panels, you can see how nice those are, full length door panel. Uh, all of the bright work or the trim around the door panels is in very nice shape. You can take a look at the armrest uh, portion of the door panel also and see that it hasn't been used or abused too much through the years. It looks great, there's no cracks or anything like that. Uh, or discolorations even in that uh, in that portion of the door. Down below you do have the interior lights also and those are lit up as you can see there. Further inside now we've got our factory dash. It is a padded dash. No cracks whatsoever in the top of the dash so that looks great. Uh, in our dash panel itself for our gauges you can see it's got the wood inlays both over with our gauges as well as over here on our glove box. Uh, now factory instrumentation in here, we've got the fuel gauge and the oil pressure gauge to the left of the steering wheel. Right in the center we've got a 140 mile an hour speedometer and then to the right of the steering wheel we've got our amps gauge and our water temperature gauge. Again, all of which are the factory gauges for the car. You can see also factory steering wheel here. Again, that looks nice. It's the wood grain wheel. Got the correct uh, everything in here for that. It just it looks great in here. Now, down below our gauges, um, we do have on the left side of the column, that is where you'll find the switch for the power convertible top. Uh, and it does function. Um, then over here to the right of the column, you've got your factory heater controls right here. This unit right here, this is your air conditioning here. These are your vents for that. So that's all intact. You've got the uh, automatic four shifter here for that C4 transmission. Factory seats, these are bucket seats up front. Of course, you've got your seats in the back, all matching upholstery. And after running the codes on this also, um, I believe that this is what they called the pony interior. 
Uh, it does have some of the um, the raised, uh, you know, the Mustangs and so forth on the front and rear seat upholstery. So everything looks nice. As far as wear and tear goes, um, I can't really say anything bad about this. Uh, the seats look great. I don't see any rips or tears in the front seats. Um, usually the driver's side gets the worst of it, but again, it looks really good. Carpeting, that looks great too. Black carpeting, no tears or rips in that. I don't see any kind of uh, discolorations or fading in the carpet either, neither in the front or in the back of our car. Our convertible top on the inside looks great. Um, all of our bows and everything throughout looks really good too. Door panels in the back, those are in great shape as well. Um, factory AM radio. Then the only thing that's a little bit, uh, uh, I won't say out of place, it looks fine just where it's at, just not original to the car, would be this center armrest or console here. Uh, somebody's gone ahead and added this in. It does have a couple of cup holders in it. But they have gone ahead and added the Mustang badging here to it. So it looks like it belongs in this car. So again, just a nice little touch for somebody that wants a little extra compartment to put something in or something that they can rest their arm and put a couple of coffees in whenever you're out uh, cruising around in this car. Okay, so we've got our 1965 Ford Mustang convertible here up on the lift. So we're going to go through the underside as we always do and show you exactly what it is that we see underneath here, starting with the front end. Of course, we always go over front suspension, steering, braking, and so forth. So suspension-wise, all stock stuff up here. we got your lower control arms, upper A arms here. Again, all the stock components there. This is the strut rod front suspension. Now, your strut rod bushings up front. They look fairly well, um, look like everything's been maintained uh, very well throughout all the years there. Uh, we do have a front sway bar here too. All of your frame mount bushings, those look good and intact. Your sway bar end links also look good. All those bushings look good. Hardware looks good as well. Steering, this is a power steering car. You got your power rack and pinion unit right here. Um, all of your, uh, your tie rods here ball joints on each end, uh, here we go, uh, those are all look good, they have the rubber dust boots all intact, you can tell things have been maintained underneath here too. Now these uh, ball joints here, these are the greaseless ball joints, there are no zerk fittings on those, so those uh, probably were replaced at some time and those were put on, so those should be all good to go for you there. Um, then out at the ends for braking, we've got uh, front disc brakes. Now this is a manual brake car. Front discs, rear drums on this car. Um, and again, the front discs, nothing special there. It's just your Ford equipment. So again, you're going to be able to buy components for these uh, at any auto parts store that you may need to go to. Um, now while we're up front, let's go ahead and talk about the drive line and then we'll walk our way back through the car. Uh, we have a non-original motor. This is a 289 uh, cubic inch small block Ford engine. Um, uh, this one, we checked the date codes out on it. Uh, looks like it was done uh, somewhere beginning of 67, probably March of 67, according to the date code. Um, as far as the transmission, from what I can tell, transmission looks like it is probably the original transmission for this car. As I look up in, I don't see anywhere where this transmission tunnel has ever been modified. Uh, the car originally came with a C4 transmission, and that's what this is, a C4 automatic transmission. We have the bell housing here. You do have the cover on the front to help protect that flywheel from any dirt or debris getting in there and causing any damage. Um, you can also see the headers hanging down here. We've got long tube headers, dual exhausts the whole way back through. You've got a set of dual mufflers here, probably kind of like a turbo muffler here. And then of course you've got correct style tailpipes that go up over top of the rear end, exit out the rear of the car as they should, and they're finished off with a set of chrome exhaust tips in the back. Um, as we come back up here to the front, I'll finish talking about the drive line. We've got a drive shaft here. Um, that drive shaft is, let me check around it. That drive shaft is balanced. So again, that's going to take a lot of the vibration out of there. 
rear end on this car. This is an eight inch Ford rear end. Uh, according to the tag on the rear end, we've got a 2.80 gear in this. This is a limited slip uh, on this car. Uh, so again, that's what your rear end is, 2.80. And um, we can look at the dates, the build date on that rear end for that center section. And it appears as though the rear end for this car is the correct rear end, the original rear for this, uh, this, this vehicle here. So again, should be original rear end, should be the original transmission. Just the motor has been swapped out in this car. As far as the floor pans go on the vehicle, um, as we can look here and see, uh, to the best of my ability, I do not see any patching whatsoever. I don't see any holes either in these floors. It looks to be the original floors. And as you can probably see in the camera, it is undercoated. Now we here do not do any undercoating like this. Um, so I'm gonna say that this is probably the original undercoating for these floors. As we look the whole way through here, um, it's very consistent the whole way through and it's everywhere. It's up in the tunnel and everywhere. So I would say probably factory original undercoating that was put on this car. You can see it's got the bracing here in the center. Again, it is a convertible. So they always would put that little bit of extra bracing in here. All of your drain plugs are all intact throughout all of the floor here. Uh, all of your frame that's here uh, up front, very square, very straight. Even your, um, what you know, some people call them the dog legs here, they go up over top of the rear end. Those are very straight and square the whole way throughout the vehicle. Pinch welds too on your rockers both sides. I can look straight down the sides here and see that those pinch welds are nice and straight. Those rocker panels where they meet the floors very straight the whole way down the sides of the car. So that's always a good sign. As I said for braking on the back we do have the drum brakes uh, and those are complete. We are hooked up with our emergency brakes. So you've got all the additional um, frame mounts and cables and so forth all the way back to your drums here. So the e-brake is hooked up on this car. Rear suspension, multi-leaf rear. Um, we have a set of shocks back here. Looks like they've been replaced probably not too long ago. They look to be in good condition. Um, and as far as the running gear, wheels and tires on this car, these are the factory steel, uh, I guess, Mustang rally wheels. Um, they're 14 inch steel wheels. They do have the beauty rings and the center caps. Uh, and mounted on those wheels, we've got a set of BF Goodrich Radial TA tires. These are um, 205, I believe 7014s. Let me look real quick. Yep, 205 70 R14s, and that's all four corners. And as you can tell probably, the tread on all four of those tires is just like brand new. So uh, as far as, you know, come time to rotate tires, you're not going to have an issue with one side or one end being bigger than the other. You can flip these no problem and everything's going to wear, um, you know, twice as long, you know, as what it would if you had different size tires. So with that said, that's pretty much everything for underneath uh, this car here.